My name is Penn Gillette. This is my partner, Teller. We're Penn and Teller. When we're working as Penn and Teller, we wear gray business suits and we do magic. We did a Broadway show, we did a movie, we do a lot of TV. We're also big fans of science, especially computers. We met Rob Pike and Dennis Ritchie of Bell Labs fame, and we all became friends. They wanted to do a practical joke on their boss. Now, we don't do this kind of stuff. We don't pull practical jokes on individual citizens. But this was a special case. Their boss is Arno Penzias, who shared a Nobel Prize for discovering the background noise left over from the Big Bang. The scam had to be connected with science, and it couldn't be mean-spirited. We couldn't just, you know, fill his car with jello or cover him with cockroaches. They really like Arno, and the scam had to prove how much they respected him. They wanted to keep Arno happy. The backbone of science is the demo. When you get something that almost works, you call in your boss and get it to almost, almost work in front of him. Here's what he saw. A computer terminal, a camera, and a bright light right in his eyes. What is the, what is the purpose of the I'll show you. Just have a seat. The light was my idea. A practical joke can't be all sweet and pleasant. Here's what he didn't see. In the room next door, just a folding divider away, was a second computer terminal, operated by Dennis, a video camera, and us. We're going to make Arno think he's going to see a moderately fancy development of voice recognition. It will be 100% bogus. To convince Arno, we had to make it look jerry-rigged and hard. Here's Rob making Arno say test words into a microphone and forcing him to hold his mouth in line with a video camera trained on his lips for edge detection. After uncomfortable pauses and lots of computer errors generated by Dennis' his deliberate annoyances, the computer is getting familiar with Arno's voice. No, I'm not. I'm not no, no. We finally got the vice president the of Bell Labs to say, "Ho hocus," into a microphone. <laughs> At this point, so like we had already do won. Is now, uh, don't say this yet, but just say a few of the sentences up here slowly and wait. It'll respond. It'll just say the same thing. It'll echo back to you. It's got to think about it, so there's a delay. Now, wait till could the machine it. handle whole sentences? So, anytime you're ready, just say one of the sentences. Good afternoon. Didn't like that Didn't one. Didn't like that one. Just keep going. It's a pleasure having you with you? us. Oh, well, there it is. It just cut. How are you? Why was it so slow? Okay, okay stop. Let me, let me focus on things for a second. Well, the machine couldn't do squat, but Dennis could recognize sentences, but only when he wanted to. Kenneth, what is the frequency? Please repeat. Kenneth, what is the frequency? Kenneth. What is the frequency? That's just the voice synthesizer doing the best it can. Okay, I think we can move on. Why don't you just say next very clearly? And then next. Please repeat. Next. 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 Okay, now here's where it gets kind of fun. So what I did was I borrowed a friend's tape of a talk show, David Letterman's show, from a couple of weeks ago. He claimed his program would let Arno interview one of the guests. All he had, of course, was us sitting in the adjacent room ready to answer questions. Now, Arno's a smart man. To get over the ploy this simple, we needed some fine touches of misdirection. So we gave Arno what's called a magician's choice. Did he want to talk to an unknown star of a soap opera that he didn't watch? an author of a book on Martha Graham, or us. Call us cocky, but we felt he'd make the right choice. Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller. Which is Penn and which is Teller? Don't you learn anything? My name is Penn Gillette. This is my partner, Teller. Longer name, bigger person. <laughs> or the other way around. You made a movie? Well, I, uh, I dated Julie for six months, and I tell you, <laughs> she had uh, arthritis in both hands. Watch Rob act as we send random answers back to Arno. Lots of people seem to like you. Have you won many awards? We got the OB, uh, Teller took that, and Teller's going to get the Academy Award, and I am holding out for the Nobel Prize. We got a shot, we got a shot. 
Arno could now ad lib. He had a note sheet and he could make up questions any way he wanted. It was working, but just barely. Arno had to ask questions over and over again, and the answers were sometimes nonsense. It was a perfectly normal demo. What do you do with rats and cockroaches? That's where we have sex. I'm not sure that was really the right question. Maybe you should try asking that a little <laughs> bit more clearly. What, what do you do with rats and cockroaches? Okay, we were flying. It was perfect. Arno was talking to a machine, and the machine was kind of working, and Rob was embarrassed. Arno had taken the bait, and it was time for Rob to set the hook. He tells Arno to ask us to do a trick. Okay, are you going to do one of your famous tricks for us? Well, we hung uh, upside down on Saturday Night Live, and that went well. And we dumped uh, cockroaches right here and played with leeches. But we have something uh, real special for you we've never done before. And uh, can the cameraman go handheld? You just, uh, just come with us here. We have a real special thing we worked out for you. Why don't you step there? into reality. So we've worked out this little thing here where as a person was watching a video screen we could actually come in and, and do something where we'd interact with the person. Oh, hello. Hello, Arnold. Nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Neat program, huh? Yes. <laughs> now you have the other two people available also? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are other different rooms. We have all different rooms here. That's all the way down here. It took him a half hour to realize there was no voice recognition whatsoever going on. It took him almost as long to realize that the star of Dynasty and the author of the Martha Graham book weren't also in the other room. It took him days to recover. Or maybe. 